Porter Gals presents Terrifying Tales. Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Allison. And we're the Polter Gals. Spooky. <laughs> Jack the Ripper. Location, Whitechapel, London. In the year of 1888, killed a total of five victims. Over the course of ten weeks, a serial killer stalked the dark alleyways of Whitechapel, London. During the short reign of terror, Jack the Ripper killed at least five women, but was able to avoid capture and has never been identified. In the early hours of August 31st, 1888, the body of Mary Ann Nichols was found. Mary had fled her husband and her five kids. It was believed that she was working as a prostitute when she was found in Whitechapel. It is said that her body was mutilated with cuts to her throat and her abdomen had been sliced open, showing her bowel. Eight days later, a second body of another prostitute, Annie Chapman, was found. She had been complaining of not feeling well and needing a place to spend the night. She was found nearby, with once again cuts to her throat and abdomen. Only this time, the killer had also cut part of her stomach and intestines out and had placed them on her shoulders. On September 30th, Jack the Ripper claimed his third life, Elizabeth Stride. She had been cleaning the day before to make money at a lodging house. She was also found with her throat cut out, but unlike the other two victims, she did not have her abdomen cut. It is believed she was less mutilated due to the killer being interrupted. A man by the name of Israel said that he had thought he had seen her being attacked about 15 minutes before she was found, but brushed it off as a domestic dispute. 45 minutes later, another body was found near the square. This woman was Catherine, whose last words were to her partner, John Kelly. He was worried about the presence of a serial killer but Catherine had told him, Don't you fear for me. I'll take care of myself, and I shall not fall into his hands. Unfortunately, this was a promise she couldn't keep to John, and was found with, of course, her throat cut out and disemboweled. Her face had been disfigured, with large V cuts on her cheeks as well as her eyelids. On the morning of November 9th, John McCarthy went to ask his tenant, Mary Kelly, for the late rent that she owed only to find that she had become the fifth and final victim. He recalled that the bed was all that remained of her. There was little left of her, and not more than a skeleton. Her face was terribly mutilated, leaving a vivid picture in his head. There are a few theories in this story. The first theory is, after each murder, the Ripper was able to get away into the night without being captured, and left very little clues behind. Over the course of the investigation, the police interviewed about 2,000 people and detained 80, paying special attention to those that were butchers and surgeons. Unfortunately, they never came close to finding the Ripper's identity. In the 130 years since the murders, more than 500 people have been suspects, but like I mentioned before, no one coming close to being named the killer. It is also said that the name Jack had come from a letter that was supposedly passed to the police in September of 1888, but it was never confirmed it was sent from the killer, making it seem a hoax. Supposed Suspects In 2014, Russell Edwards had claimed that the Ripper was a 23-year-old Polish barber, Aaron, who had lived in the East End at the time of the murders. In 2007, Russell had bought a blood-stained shawl which was found close to the body of Catherine. Russell had it tested for DNA, as to which he claims it matches Aaron. However, others have dismissed this claim, since it had been contaminated for over a century, making it an unreliable source of evidence. One of the most thrilling theories is that the Ripper was Queen Victoria's grandson, Prince Albert Victor, who is known to the family as Eddie. It is believed that he had contracted syphilis from his visits to East End brothels. 
causing him to go insane and going on a killing spree. Yet, once again, there is no evidence to support this, and he was believed to have been out of London at the time of the murders. Another suspect was a German-born artist, Walter. After producing a series of paintings of naked prostitutes that some suggest were very similar to the autopsy pictures of the Ripper's victims. One of his paintings was entitled Jack the Ripper's Bedroom. In 2002, American crime writer Patricia published her book Portrait of a Killer Jack. The Ripper case closed in which she argued that a team of experts had found Walter's DNA on the so-called Jack Letter. But once again, there was no evidence to suggest that William was even in London in 1888, and some even placing him in France, proving that he was not the killer. The last suggested killer was made by a London detective, in which he suggested that John was the Ripper as the murderers stopped following his suicide. He was a former school teacher and was believed to have been seen in Whitechapel at the time of the murders and his body was found floating in a nearby river after the Ripper's final victim, Mary Kelly. A search of John's house would find a note from him saying he deserves to die, as he believed he was going insane, but nothing connecting him to the actual murders. Despite all this, the case still remains open, thus leaving this even more mysterious than when it started. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or on YouTube at The Porter Gals or on Instagram at the underscore portrait gals. You can also find us wherever you get your podcast or at roguemedianetwork.com. You've been listening to The Polter Gals, a Rogue Media Network podcast. This has been a Rogue Media podcast. Podcast.